Hello, everybody. My name is Carolyn Sutliff, and I had the opportunity to study with the Jayadev lab um, about how the proximity to beta amyloid plaques in Alzheimer's patients um, disrupts the endolysosomal function of microglia. Okay. So first off, um, Alzheimer's disease is a neurodegenerative condition, which is characterized by tau tangles in beta amyloid plaques. So beta amyloid um, accumulates naturally over time, just as we age. But with Alzheimer's patients, we see that they um, are packaged into little plaques. And that's kind of what we see um, in the second image. And um, we don't really know the process of how um, Alzheimer's disease progresses, but we do have one part that we think is a pretty big um, player in the process of neurodegeneration, which is neuroinflammation. And microglia have been implicated in these because um, they are immune cells in the central nervous system. So what they do um, is they phagocytose things that shouldn't be there like um, foreign bodies, or they can just clean up the brain. So they protect your brain, keep it clean. Um, they're great. <laughs> they're very cute too. Um, so they have certain morphologies. So um, right here, we have the resting state. So that's when they're ramified and they have long processes whenever they're surveying their surroundings, looking for things that need to be cleaned up. Um, but then as we go towards the activation phase, they become amoeboid. And that's whenever they um, are typically phagocytosing things. Um, so then back here in the circles, those are the plaques in pink. And then the microglia are in green and they um, swarm plaques. And um, they can go inside the plaques or just hang around outside, but they have an amoeboid appearance around flex. Um, and so, uh, okay, hold on. there we go. Don't know who that was. Um, <laughs> so this is the endolysosomal function. Um, so this is what microglia use to phagocytose things. Um, so what they do is they can just kind of like take it into the lysosome and then break it down from there. Um, and this is one of the first uh, pathologies that we see for Alzheimer's patients. So this is before we see any beta amyloid plaques or any tau tangles. This is the first part. Um, so the question is, is it amyloid beta or beta amyloid plaques that cause um, the inflammation of microglia? Um, so what we did is we got a few, um, we had seven patient or cases. Um, two did not have Alzheimer's disease, and then five did. Um, we had a matched case. So we had um, basically an equal or <laughs> almost equal age for the control as in the Alzheimer's patients. So um, we used immunohistochemical staining and um, spinning disc microscopy to investigate what's going on with the microglia. So what we do with the immunohistochemical chemical staining is that we have an antibody, a primary antibody to attach, um, and then a secondary antibody with a fluorescent protein. And so here are a little protein. We have microglia in green, which are stained with IBO1, lysosomes in red, which are stained with LAMP1, and plaques with 6E10 in pink, and then uh, the nucleus with DAPI in blue. So in our controls, the microglia are in inactivated state. So they're the ramified calm ones. They're just surveying their surroundings. There's basically nothing going on. And if you notice, we have basically no red signals. So no lamp one. That means that these microglia are not inflamed. Um, and in comparison to, oops, okay, so there's the microglia. So we have these plaques um, and they take on a very different morphology in the immediate area around plaques. They become more amoeboid, and you'll notice some inflammation going on compared to the surrounding microglia, which are more ramified and not inflamed. So uh, next, here we have the Alzheimer's microglia. So with these close-up pictures, you can see the LAMP1 signals better. And we see that there is a <laughs> very big increase of LAMP1 signaling, which means that we have more lysosomes or we don't really know if they're more lysosomes or if they're just bigger lysosomes. Um, so what they do is they've really swarmed around the plaques and then they become inflamed with uh, greater length one. 
signal. And so this kind of fits along with our theory that uh, beta amyloid plaques cause a disruption of the endolysosomal function because we only see an increase of LAMP1 in the immediate area around the plaque. Um, so we don't really know why the LAMP1 signal increases. We don't know if it's triggered specifically by the beta amyloid, um, like it just makes the microglia mad, or if the microglia recognizes it as a threat and overproduces lysosomes to dissolve it. Um, so again, this kind of fits into the whole um, theory that the beta amyloid is what causes the microglia to become inflamed and cause the neuroinflammation, which um, then furthers the progression of Alzheimer's disease with neuro, um, neurodegeneration. So some future directions that we can take would basically be to have additional cases. That way we can get better statistics from our group. Um, another part would be additional imaging. So I believe somebody mentioned having Z-stacks. I think it was Caroline. Um, so um, it would be able to help us figure out if the lysosomes are bigger or if they're just more lysosomes. Um, and then, um, let's see, quantification. So just do some stereology and analysis of um, specifically the area around the microglia or around the plaques um, as you get further and further away. So uh, lastly, I'd like to acknowledge everyone. Um, it's been an amazing program. So thank you, Sylvia and Julie. And um, thank you to Dr. Ellen Bogan, Mrs. Ellen Bogan. And um, um, <laughs> let's see, let's go with the JIDEV lab next. <laughs> so <laughs> over there we have Dr. Prater, who's been amazing. She's my PI and Lexi, um, she's been amazing as well. They've really made the summer amazing. And uh, thank you to Mr. Pritchin, um, I believe. Okay, and the donors, that's also very important. So thank you to the donors for allowing us to study their, uh, the tissue of their relatives. So um, yeah, thank you all.